Are you like Thomas? He's wondering why he can't seem to learn to code even though he's watched every tutorial, done four different online bootcamps, he's even bought an expensive new keyboard that all the cool programming YouTuber kids use. To make things worse, he still doesn't have a job and somehow needs to find a way to pay his bills but he cannot even seem to get an interview despite sending out 27 applications. The world seems to be against Thomas and he's ready to quit and go back to his old uninspiring career as a corner store salesman. Thomas, you have a decision to make. You can either take the blue pill and blame all your failures on external factors and simply quit pursuing and learning to code. Or you can take the red pill and finally be revealed the truth about why learning to code seems so hard, even though it doesn't have to be. And the secrets of all those getting developer jobs at Google and Facebook. I'll take the blue pill. Oh, for God's sake. I mean, you told me I had a choice. Don't you think you need to show a good example to your audience? <sighs> Fine. Luckily, eventually Thomas chose the red pill and this finally allowed him to take the necessary action and the simple changes he implemented as a result allowed him to go from a struggling Hello World programmer to completing 10 hard lead code problems per minute using C. So it's time to go back in time and start roasting my beginner self on all the dumb things he did and thought back when he was first starting learning to code. And trust me, I am not gonna hold back. And if you appreciate me not holding back, go leave a like on this video. And with that, let's go back in time to when I first started learning to code with my first ever coding course, Python for Everybody. The course itself is excellent and I still recommend it to most people as the place to start, especially if you wanna learn Python, affiliate link down below. But if they do still have the free option to audit the course rather than pay for the certificate, you should audit it for free. The certificate is not worth paying for, even though I would benefit if you do so. Anyway, the first few weeks were pretty easy. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was getting my first exposure to loops, variables, and error codes, lots of those. But at some point, things started getting hard. Suddenly I couldn't do the assignments by just following the exact procedure I had learned in the lectures and I had to actually go look up things myself. Who would have thought that that could happen when you're coding, right? And this made me angry. What an idiot I was. I didn't realize that having the actual ability to open google.com and go look up how to do something that I didn't know how to do is actually a very core part of being a programmer and the reason why companies pay a lot of money for programmers in the first place because if the problems that you were solving were easy to solve by just following some basic tutorial no one would be paying you to program right being faced with a problem that you don't immediately know how to solve based on some tutorial that you watch and having to look up things from stack overflow and stuff is not cheating it is a necessary and a key part of being a software engineer and the discomfort of having to figure out how to do something that you've never done before is a good thing because discomfort is actually what will make you grow and learn. So it's worth going through the discomfort and you absolutely shouldn't get angry just because something is hard and instead just start seeing challenges as just interesting problems to solve and something that is exciting rather than anger infusing. So this was a big mistake that I was making in the beginning and oh boy do I wish that it was the only one. When the course first taught me how to write a for loop for example, the concept seemed simple enough so I actually skipped a lot of the parts where I was instructed to go and actually apply the for loop. What a fool I was. Well, for loop seem easy enough. A few moments later. How, wait, how the hell do I write a for loop again? Just because it seems like you learned something from watching a tutorial or watching someone else do it on a video doesn't mean that you've actually learned it. Sadly, and probably unsurprisingly enough, it's not actually until you write code yourself that you actually learn to write code and the things that you're learning actually become ingrained into your brain in such a way that when you need to apply them in the future, not only will you be able to remember the syntax because you've done it like 10 times before, so it's just inside of your brain. You can just like easily extract it from your brain without even thinking about it. You'll also start to understand and see the situations where these concepts are actually supposed to be used. You need to also understand why for loops are important and what are the situations where you need to use them. And the only way to build the muscle memory and the intuitive understanding of where you're supposed to use all coding concepts is just to use them in a lot of different scenarios. And the only way to properly do this is to do it yourself rather than watching someone else do it. And it's not until I started doing that 
that coding actually started to become effortless. So after this second hack, I was starting to get a hang of how you were actually supposed to learn this coding thing. And I was starting to build some confidence, but the reality was that I was still doing so many things wrong. Like this next thing that I learned that completely shifted my mindset and which turned out to be one of the biggest lessons of my entire learning to code journey. But before I reveal what that was, we need to talk about something else that's really important in your coding journey. And that is social connection. Because the nature of programming and the tech industry is that the work can be very individual. So something I wish I had when I was starting out is a platform and a place to find and reach out to like-minded programmers. So that is why I now want to talk to you about Showcase. Showcase is essentially like a social network, except it's better because it's a social network for programmers. In there you can do all sorts of cool things like find communities based on your language to connect with people who are learning the same things as you are. Usually as programmers we would need to have at least five profiles in five platforms like GitHub, LinkedIn and Twitter just to showcase who we are and what we are interested in as developers. So with Showcase you can combine all of this into your Showcase developer profile where you can share your tech stack, top repositories, work experience and more in one place. And on top of this, Showcase can also help you find a job. Firstly, their resume feature allows you to automatically generate a resume just like that based on your Showcase profile. And then you can use this resume to apply for jobs using their Find Jobs section, which you can conveniently filter based on your preferences like salary, location, tech stack, to show job listings based on how much they are a match for what you are looking for. And once you work with different people, you can add them to your Showcase circle so that they can vouch for you and you can in turn vouch for them so that you can generally just build this circle and this community of people you work with which is kind of cool so if you'd like to join showcase you can do so from the first link in the description down below thank you for showcase for sponsoring this video and now on to the last mistake that i fixed as a beginner after finishing university in july of 2021 i essentially decided to take a whole year off before i was then going to start my first job hopefully as a developer and so during this whole time i was living at home in Finland with my family and because I live in a small town there was not much for me to do so I was able to just essentially focus almost all of my time on just learning to code which was really great. So throughout this whole period I became very concerned about work-life balance but then I came to the realization that if you figure out work that you actually enjoy spending time working doesn't have to be a bad thing. To illustrate what I mean, I want to share you an excellent quote from the entrepreneur Alex Hormozzi on LinkedIn. Work-life balance implies that when you're working, you're not living. In my experience, it's been the opposite. When I work, I live. And I realized that this is exactly how I thought about coding. Because in my previous life, I had spent a lot of time figuring out what is the career that I actually want to do. I had done internships in banking, didn't like it. I did an internship in consulting, didn't like that either. And I talk about this on my channel a lot. And through these experiences, I had learned about what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy. And that is sort of why I ended up coming onto coding. I realized I really enjoy logical problem solving. I really enjoy building a skill and learning a lot of different complicated things and I generally just really want to understand how computers work. And so I realized that for me, learning to code was actually activating a lot of the same parts of my brain that I used to activate back in my earlier days when I was really into video games. And so I realized that spending a lot of time working if you're enjoying your work isn't a bad thing. I don't consider wasting my time watching Netflix life. Like that to me is not exciting. What's exciting to me is building my skills, learning things, learning many things about life, learning how to get better at making these YouTube videos. That to me is a fulfilling way to live because I spent such a long time figuring out what was the work that I actually wanted to do. The work that I now do is the thing that I want to do the most. And it might not feel like this in the beginning. If you're just in the beginning stages of a coding journey, you're probably not enjoying coding as much as you would want to. But the thing is, with any skill, the better you get at it, the more you enjoy it. There's a great book about this idea. It's called So Good They Can't Ignore You. And the core idea of this book is that this idea of following your passion is a completely wrong way to approach life. What you should actually do is figure out some area, some industry, some skill that you want to get really good at. Then just put in the work, put in the hours to get really good at the thing and you will actually start enjoying it. That will become fulfilling to you. So as boring as this conclusion as this advice would probably sound like the only way to really make coding effortless to the point where that is the thing that you find exciting and fulfilling to do is just to put in the hours and to get really 
good at it. Really, all of this is just to say that learning to code is all about your mindset at the end of the day. First of all, your mindset relating to approaching difficult problems. Coding is hard, yes. That is the reason why it is valuable. And you need to get to the point where you enjoy the challenge and you enjoy solving difficult problems. But even more importantly, you need to get to the point where you actually enjoy the process of coding. When it comes to anything, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're never going to be able to go that extra mile to be really, really good at it. And so if it takes you a while in the beginning to start enjoying it, because in the beginning you're not very good at it, that's fine, but you need to be willing to go through those beginning moments. But at the end of the day, if you can't see yourself ever enjoying coding, if you just hate it, if you just do not want to do it, then really the only answer I can give you is that coding is probably just not for you and it'll probably never become effortless because the only way to really make coding effortless is to enjoy the process is to want to learn you need to want to learn about coding you need to want to understand how programming languages work because if you don't there will always be those people like me who really really want to learn it but if you want it more than others if you want it more than me you will be better than others you will be better than me the only way to do that is to focus on the process, not the goal. That is how you make coding effortless. And it's not until I realized this that it started to become effortless for me as well. But even when you do all of these things, there's unfortunately still one more thing that you need, which is a path and a roadmap to apply all of these concepts to. And to learn exactly that, I made this video right here. There's still a lot more pitfalls that a lot of people fall into that I couldn't fit in this video. So watching this and this video right here together will be super, super powerful. At least these glasses look good on me.